Ever wonder how a math whiz beat Wall Street's best traders at their own game and became a billionaire? Well, let us introduce you to the legend himself, Jim Simons. A math professor who looks like he just stepped out of a dusty library, raking in billions, not from teaching algebra, but by mastering the financial universe. Jim Simons' journey from math professor to hedge fund titan is truly remarkable. This genius cracked codes for the government before setting his sights on the stock market. Armed with advanced algorithms and supercomputers, he founded the most successful quant fund ever, Renaissance Technologies. From 1988 to 2018, it generated over $100 billion in profits. So let's dive into the incredible tale of how a math genius turned the world of finance on its head. Jim Simons was born in 1938 to a middle-class Jewish family in Brooklyn, Massachusetts. As a three-year-old, his parents found him dividing numbers down from 1,024 by two. Little did they know, their toddler was tackling Zeno's paradox. If you have to travel half the remaining distance to reach your destination, you'll never get there, since the distance keeps having. Pretty amazing for a preschooler. After finishing high school, the family doctor thought medicine would be a good career path for a bright Jewish kid like Jim. But Jim had different plans. He decided to study math at MIT. He struggled at first and failed some tests, but one summer he really buckled down to nail those complex formulas. Something clicked, and he finally started to thrive. Jim loved how formulas across all of math seemed to connect, hinting at the deeper mysteries of the universe. You'd often find him lying on his back with his eyes closed, totally absorbed in an equation. Jim knew this was the life for him. Cigarettes, coffee, and math at all hours. After knocking it out of the park academically at MIT, Jim breezed through a PhD at Berkeley in just two years. His obvious brilliance landed him a teaching gig at Harvard right after graduating. Jim was a hugely popular professor at Harvard. His casual, enthusiastic teaching style matched his laid-back wardrobe. He never even wore socks. He was humble and always approached topics with a beginner's curiosity. Sometimes with really complex math problems, he'd even admit to students that he barely understood it better than they did. But after a couple years, Jim got bored with teaching. Life had become predictable. Just a cycle of lectures and polite social events, he desperately needed a new challenge. In 1964, the perfect opportunity arose and Jim jumped at it. He was hired by a national intelligence group called the IDA to help fight the Cold War. The IDA, Institute for Defense Analysis, was an elite research outfit funded by the government to recruit mathematicians to crack Soviet spy codes. At the time, they were in a slump. They hadn't broken any big codes in over a decade, so they brought on geniuses like Jim who had fresh ideas but no code-breaking experience. It was there Jim learned to interpret seemingly meaningless data through mathematical models, and he developed an ultra-fast code-breaking algorithm. Soon after, the CIA discovered the Soviets had sent a coded message with incorrect settings. Jim and his team capitalized on this mistake, using his new algorithm to exploit the enemy's messaging system. Jim became a rock star at the IDA and in the code-breaking world, but this success wasn't enough. He still craved bigger mathematical challenges and more cryptic codes to crack. While cracking codes at the IDA, Jim spent his free time researching the world of global finance. Eager to earn more money, he pondered how to use his numerical talents to crack the stock market. Rather than traditional methods based on earnings and news, Jim approached the market completely differently, like an abstract mathematical system. He developed a model that simply observed market moves and stocks themselves, ignoring outside context. His theory posited the market had eight underlying states. This system didn't care why the market entered certain states, it just identified them to make strategic bets. Jim's approach was revolutionary. He was a trailblazer in predictive analytics. His original method presaged machine learning techniques widely used today across fields. In 1968, after telling his IDA colleagues he opposed the Vietnam War, Jim was fired at age 30. Stunned, he returned to teaching at Stony Brook University in New York, 
not far from Wall Street. Unlike his academic peers, Jim was attracted to money and wanted to be very rich. After 10 years teaching, the now 40-year-old Jim left to start his first hedge fund, Monometrics, to find hidden market patterns using math. His first move was recruiting his old IDA pal, Leonard Baum, creator of the famous Baum-Welch algorithm. This algorithm made educated predictions by analyzing event chains and estimating probabilities. For example, it could predict baseball outcomes just by detecting play patterns without knowing the rules. Jim and Leonard figured this predictive modeling would be useful for tracking financial markets. In 1979, before digital trading, they covered their tiny Long Island office in paper charts to collect data. They started applying the algorithm to currency trading and immediately began raking in money. One day, Jim and Leonard were chilling on the beach when their algorithm suddenly predicted the British pound would rise that night. Still in swim trunks, they rushed from the sand to their Long Island office and bought up pounds while the price was low. Just as predicted, the pound started climbing rapidly, even though neither had any idea why. They didn't follow British policies at all. They simply trusted their algorithm signals. Within a couple years, Jim's hedge fund Monometrics had grown by tens of millions purely by following the math. Monometrics was Jim's first foray into finance. After early success, he assembled a team of mathematicians around himself and Leonard. He also convinced some math geniuses to join and started a new hedge fund with enhanced algorithms called Limroy. But it wasn't smooth sailing. Though their algorithm bought low, it didn't sell high enough. Once they bought gold at $500 per ounce, it skyrocketed to $865, but they didn't sell in time before it crashed back down. Losses like this mounted daily, with the fund losing millions and teetering on collapse. Fortunately, Jim convinced smart friends to invest, buying time to improve his algorithm. In the early 80s, as computers emerged, while other funds relied on news and fundamentals, Jim believed computers could analyze data better than humans. He renamed Monometrics to Renaissance Technologies, officially launching the legendary quantitative hedge fund that would transform finance. Jim started feeding historical data into computers to detect consistent market patterns applying to the present. He bought stacks of books from the World Bank, old commodity and currency records pre-World War II, but the volatile present made extrapolating useful patterns from history difficult. The key was monitoring the present swiftly. So Jim purchased expensive computers, huge data storage, and high-speed market connections to get live prices no other fund had. Combining this flood of real-time data with Baum's predictive math, enhanced by fellow mathematician James Axe, was a breakthrough. James Axe joined and helped refine Baum's algorithm to better predict the wildly fluctuating 80s markets. Collaborating closely, Simons and Axe decided to launch a new renaissance fund together called Medallion. Leveraging their combined brain power, Medallion soon became Renaissance's most profitable portfolio. As Renaissance attracted more sophisticated investors, they aggressively recruited top talent, not just good, but the best. One new high-profile recruit was IBM engineer Robert Mercer, who did crucial work on speech recognition. A brilliant programmer and thinker hungry for wealth, Mercer was the perfect missing piece to propel Renaissance to the next level. At Renaissance, Mercer's programming helped identify flaws, boosting success throughout the 90s. They averaged 60% returns annually with no losing years and created history in the process. But the collaboration ultimately fractured over politics. Most infuriating to Democrat Simons, Mercer bankrolled Donald Trump's presidential campaign. They say money doesn't change you, it amplifies you. Early on at Renaissance, Simons and Mercer's differences weren't obvious. They loved markets and money. But after becoming ultra-wealthy, Mercer backed Trump in 2016, defeating Hillary Clinton, who had Simons' support. This led to Mercer being forced out of Renaissance. As they say, politics makes strange bedfellows and splits them apart. The medieval Medicis were a banking dynasty shaping politics, art, and power in Italy and beyond. Today, Jim Simons is a modern equivalent. His achievements are truly astonishing and inspiring. He's the most successful trader ever, 
with profits at Renaissance that dwarf legends like Soros, Cohen, and Buffett. His hedge fund made $105 billion total from 1988 to 2018. The returns were an unheard of 66% pre-fees and 39% post-fees. Most importantly, his quantitative algorithmic approach sparked a revolution beyond finance, impacting sports, politics, and more. From a boy dreaming of math equations, Jim Simons rose to become one of the most powerful and enigmatic people on Earth. And that's the incredible story of Jim Simons, the math genius who cracked the code of the financial markets. We hope you enjoyed this video on the life of a quant legend. And don't forget to subscribe to Business Explorer Network for more videos like this. If you liked this video, you might also enjoy our video on the finance-savvy housewives of Japan that ended up making billions of dollars. Check that out next for an in-depth look at how they maneuvered the financial markets with finesse. Thank you for being part of our community, and until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making history.